So, in the series of learning object oriented programming in C++, previous video was about introduction to C++. In this video, we will discuss some features of C++, important features of C++, because sometimes in theory, you need to write like they can ask you, uh, they can ask what are some features of C++, so it would be helpful for you guys. So, we will discuss all the features one by one, right. So, the very first you can say is it is as we know object oriented programming, because it follows that approach right all the features oops concept now what is this object oriented programming we have discussed what are oops concept in brief we have discussed all the oops concept the six class object abstraction encapsulation polymorphism inheritance these features like right? so it supports oops concept that is why it is object oriented programming everything revolve around an object right like that is why we it, it you know we can simply map the real world problems in programming with the help of this C++ language, right? Because in real world also everything in object we consider as an object, like Jenny, it's also, it is an object, this marker, duster, whiteboard, camera, table, all things are objects. In library we can say books, the shelf, table, chair, we consider those things as object, right? So we can think the real world problems, we can map those real world entities or the problems into programming with the help of C++ easily, right? So any real world, so it is you can say close to real world. That is why it is known as like we can implement any real world application or software in C++ only, right? So why it is object oriented programming? Because it supports those features as well as it is processor oriented, -oriented programming approach also it follows because it is superset or extension of C and C is processor oriented programming. So it follows both approach, it comes under processor oriented as well as object oriented programming, right. Now the second thing is, but it is not purely object oriented programming or not truly object oriented programming language, right, because it is not compulsory to use the classes, the concept of classes and all these OOPS concepts in a program. We can write down a program without using OOPS concept. Like if you want to print a simple hello world program that we have discussed in the video when we were uh, you know uh, seeing that installation of VS code. Simple hello world, simply you can write down header file hash include io stream and then main and see out and like I want to print Jenny. So if we haven't used any class or object kind of thing, we haven't made any class, we haven't created any class and object of those class, simply we can print anything. So that is why we known as, uh, we call it as not true or not purely object oriented programming language without using these concepts we can write down a program. It is same as C, we have just changed a few things like the for output there we use printf, here we, we use the C out, the header files and all or int main then you can also write return 0 here. So this is simple program. Right. That is why it is sometimes it is a why why question so in interview also they ask sometimes this question like why it is not a purely or a not a true object oriented programming language. And second thing we can say it is general purpose programming language. This we have discussed this point in previous video also for general purpose for creating software and application in any domain we can use C++ from system software to <coughs> application software we can create system software in this right like your operating system your, your device drivers your kernels another you we can create any applications like gui based application graphical user interface any business type of application like school management system college man management hospital management these kind of system we can create right translators like compiler uh, that interpreter we can code those things we can write those translator into c++ as well as databases for example Oracle, MySQL was written in C++. So for any kind of, for creating any kind of application or software in any domain, in any area, we can use C++. There is something for everyone in this language. So that is why it is known as general purpose programming language. It's not a specific purpose. It's not like that for a particular domain for creating, you uh, know, software in a particular domain, we can create, we can use this language. No for creating application in all the domain, right? In any area, we can use this language, right? Next is it is compiled language, means 
we write a program compiler will compile the source code into the machine code and then it would be executed so it is a compiled language we need a compiler like java is both compiled as well as interpre interpreted language python is also interpreted language right so sometimes because of this feature we call is that it is faster than other programming languages like java and python way faster than those languages because of this thing it's a compiled language like um, directly compiler converts the thing into machine code right and in java and uh, python first the code would be converted into byte code then byte code would be converted into machine code so we have a middle thing also so for this conversion it takes time sometimes the compiled languages are considered as faster language this is one factor that it is faster than other language right another uh, factor is what it uh, doesn't have any garbage collection that java is having automatic garbage collection type of thing right so because of that thing also it needs that thing also automatic garbage collection also needs some time but here is no garbage collection so it is faster and see many factors are there with which makes this language fast right it just uh just want to i just want to tell you the features that is why we cannot discuss all the factors i told you one or two factors why it is faster but we can create a separate video on this why it is known as a faster language right next thing is what it is middle level programming language means it supports the features of both low level programming language as well as high level programming language we can create low level application like system software device drivers kernels networking as well as high level applications we can create like gui graphical user interface or any management system these kind of things desktop you know desktop applications we can create so it combines the features of both low level programming as well as high level programming it is close to hardware as well as it is you can say far from hardware we can create those application which require intense knowledge of hardware for low level for system programming we need for creating obviously an operating system or device drivers we need a deep level of a deep level knowledge of uh, your system or your hardware right so for that thing also we can use this c++ this pro programming the c++ is having those features also as well as the application like application software we create any management system or anything app apps those generally don't require these knowledge you know these you know level of knowledge the deep knowledge of hardware the system right so we can create those applications also that is why it is known as middle level programming language this also sometimes they ask in why one interview why it is known as middle level language right so uh, next is what it is portable or you can say what does this mean if i write a program in my machine suppose in my laptop i have windows windows 10 i have written a c++ program i have compiled it after that obviously dot exe file would be created and we execute this file we run this file and then we got get the output right so this dot exe file we can take this file and this file can run on different machine also we can port this different machine means that but that machine should have same operating system like different machine this is uh, your uh, you can say lab in your lab you have written a program in college now dot exe file has been created you took this exe file right now this exe file you can run this exe file on at your laptop but that should have windows only windows operating system if it will have operating system uh, like uh, mac or you can say linux there it would not run but yeah it is possible so it is portable language but not platform independent yeah machine independent it is there like one machine this is one machine in your lab another machine your laptop so this program can run here the exe file and you took this exe file and that exe file directly can run on this machine also on your laptop right but that should have same operating system right so you can say portable and uh, here you can say machine independent 
but it is platform dependent platform means the operating system should be same windows windows if in your laptop you have mac or linux then it would not be possible to run you will have to compile that program again on your laptop and then you can run it just write down the program compile the program again then dot exe file would be created according to your system right here also dot exe file would be created according to your system then you can run it but directly that exe file which is here you cannot run that directly this uh, on mac and linux but yeah if you have windows then you can run maybe with little bit modification right so this is one thing that is why this is portable next uh, you can write it is a very powerful language you know why we call it as powerful or you can say robust language because it supports many built in first of all data type and many built in functions predefined functions already in adder files and the libraries we can directly call these functions right we don't have to write down these function again and again we can directly call these function right we can include that header file and we can use all the functions that are predefined in those libraries right second thing why it is so far powerful you can create your own user defined data types also with the help of classes right third thing is what it is extensible now why it is extensible see if in any standard library some built in functions are there but you can add your own function your own user defined functions in that library right here we have some library in library many functions are there built in functions so you can directly use these functions in your program right like if there is a header file string dot h there are many built in function for string string cat str cat for concatenation of two string string str len for finding out the length so those functions are already already defined in these libraries right so you can define your user defined functional you can add your user defined function also in this library right so whenever you will call this you know the header file then you can use this 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 function also that is why it is known as you have extended the library you have added your own user defined functions in this library that is why it is known as extensible language next is it supports dynamic memory allocation c also supports dynamic memory allocation with the help of like malloc calloc we can use here we have two operators also more operator new and delete how you will use these new uh, you know these two operators that also we'll see in later videos but it supports dynamic memory allocation dynamically at run time according to your requirement you can take the memory from the heap you can free the memory right so memory management is in your hand with the help because of this dynamic memory allocation right now in detail we have discussed about dynamic memory allocation in c programming videos you can refer to those videos the put the link of that video i'll put in the the i button you can check out right next feature uh, what you can write down here it is case sensitive means lower case upper case it would consider these things as different if you uh, write down here like jenny and jenny and jenny and if i write like here these are considered as different different thing like here we have only j capital all small all small letters all capital letters only e capital all small so these are considered different different letters uh, different different things different different you can say words in c++ if you write down name of a variable like if you write down int arr int arr int arr these are different variables three variables so it is case sensitive that is why see it it give the c++ programmer more options right but in html and in i think sql also those, those are not case sensitive these things are same in html it will not differentiate these thing these three are same in html and sql they will not differentiate this thing so it is case sensitive next is 
it supports the concept of pointers java doesn't support pointers with the help of pointers pointers means special variables which contain address of another variable right you can directly interact with the memory right you can directly fetch something from memory obviously it contains some address of some memory location so you are directly interacting that with the memory location right that is why memory management is in your hand in c and c++ both supports the concept of pointers but java doesn't support pointers right so when you are directly interacting with the memory that is known as low level uh, memory manipulation and this is really required when you are creating system software in this language the concept right because we need to maybe we need to access each and every memory location there pointers it support the concept of pointers and next uh, we can say it it is strongly typed strongly typed language or statically typed language now this what is this strongly typed language see before using of any variable you have to declare that variable first suppose i int a and a is equal to 5 and c out a the value i want to print so before using the say we need to declare that variable it's not like that first use this after that you just declare this variable no before using of anything any variable you have to declare first you have to tell the compiler yes this is the thing i'm going to use in future then you can use that thing right that is why it is known as strongly typed programming language so i guess these are some important features of c++ if i have missed something you can write down that feature in comment box so that other students can also get help from that thing right and if see these are important features sometimes they ask like why this is known as strongly typed why it is portable why it is known as compiled language why it is faster language why it is not a purely object oriented programming language right i hope answer of these things are clear to you guys because i have tried my best to explain the features also why like the why factor also why with all these features so i think that's it for this video in the next video we'll see maybe the in briefly we can discuss history of c++ that is also important thing before going before you know proceeding further before moving deep down into the c++ i think you should be clear about the history of this thing so i'll see you in the next video till now till then take care bye bye